right, welcome to the Talent Economy Podcast. I'm your host, Kimberly Hall, and I've been a top teller since 2018. So we are here live from the Women in Tech Lounge, sponsored by TopTel, uh, with Tasso Duvall, our CEO. So welcome, Tasso. Great to be here, Kimberly. All right, how's your summit experience been so far? How has this been different from other years? There are way more folks this year than yeah. there were in previous years. It seems like folks want to get out. The pandemic is for the most part behind us, not entirely, yeah. but it's certainly subsided. And so you could really feel people wanting to get out at all levels, whether it's the Fortune 500 C-suite or just the entrepreneurs who are here creating their new companies. And why is it so important for TopTel to be here this year? Well, the last two years we've grown over 40% year over year. It's been fantastic. We're continuing that growth this year. And so having a presence here to connect with the new businesses that we're doing business with and just getting to know new clients who we're working with yeah. has been really enriching for TopTel and building those relationships. And, and tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind having the Women in Tech Lounge. Oh, wow. Well, Keith Berlin, who's our VP of events, pitched me the idea about six months ago, and it was pitched in the context of threading into really what TopTel does so organically already. We stand for top talent, that's what TopTel stands for, and so having women in tech and TopTel throw the lounge here just makes sense. It's just what we do. In fact, in 2016, we had, I think it was about $50,000 in scholarships. In fact, one of the benefactors of the scholarship program that we ran in 2016 is going to be speaking on stage here later. I think she's next. Yeah, yeah I believe she is. <laughs> and we have done programs that have spoken to this cause or this initiative globally and it's just something that's been part of our DNA really for the last five plus years. And so we have had initiatives over the last several years that speak to women in tech and our actions have shown that very clearly. This is just yet another one of those that really helps promote the cause more broadly and threads into the narrative of what TopTal is working to do, which is give top talent the opportunity to work regardless of where they are, regardless of who they are. And I've seen you in the lounge all week. I've seen you talking to women leaders, both from our company and other companies. I've seen you in the audience, listening to the talks. What have been some highlights for you this week? Well, Web3 is a big highlight. It seems like the new trend is Web3. Before it was blockchain, NFT, Bitcoin, they're a bit more compartmentalized. Yeah. Now you hear it very streamlined into this Web3 context. That's the name that folks are giving it. There are a lot of initiatives behind it. And so it's clear that Web3 is something that venture capitalists are focusing on, companies are focusing on, and it's very clear that that's a new trend that is coming to fruition in 2022. And, um I saw you at uh, your talk over on one of the main stages, which was which was excellent. Um, one of the questions I had for you after that was kind of in the current economic environment, why do you believe that leaders should be kind of committing to remote work as part of their growth strategy? Well, remote work lowers your expenses, generally speaking, increases productivity. And so if you want to run a better company, remote work is the way to run it, if you can do that. People go off and back to the Elon Musk example where he said, remote work is questionable, or let's say comments that were similar to that. It might be if you're a solar city, if you're a SpaceX, if you're a Tesla, where half your workforce has to be physically present, either in a factory or at a launch pad, the manufacturing, or in yeah. a manufacturing facility, and then the other half can be remote, but what that does is bifurcates the workforce. So it sort of segments it to the haves and have nots. It hurts culture because you have two separate cultures. You have a culture where you have folks who are completely remote, who are probably happier, living better lives, more yeah. productive, but then you also have folks who are envy envious of that situation. And that creates a bit of animosity internally and I think folks recognize that at those companies. That's why they're very careful in those types of companies to make sure that they have 
well thought out remote work policies. But for a lot of startups, especially in the Web3 space, really just in the tech space in general, remote work is doable bar none. There's really few companies where remote work, insofar as the whole company going, is not possible. It's very few and far between. If you have manufacturing or if you have some element of physical need, it's just not very common in a small scale startup or in a new startup. So I would say that the majority of startups are going remote and they recognize it's more fiscally and operationally responsible. So that's what I see in the smaller startups. The bigger Fortune 500s, Global 2000s are still grappling with the issue at large. Let's dive a little bit more into Web3 because I know you want to talk about that. So <laughs> are we, uh, TopTel was going to become the, the number one place for Web3 talent. Is that something on your mind over the next year? Well, if you Google hire blockchain developers, I believe we're the first or second results. So we ser certainly do service that industry well. We are expanding our capabilities into bringing on talent that speaks to all different types of blockchain rubrics. There's different types of blockchains that exist out there. The way that blockchain development happens is not just one type. There's different methods of the blockchain and different types of cryptocurrencies and different types of Web3 technologies that are being embraced, whether it's IPS or NFTs or all these different new protocols that are coming to existence that speak to how Web3 is developing. That's that's something that top down servicing and I believe servicing very well. And as you're speaking to other leaders, founders, CEOs at other companies, what have you been surprised about about them that they're not looking into in this space that that you think that they should have been six months ago? Remote work. <laughs> it comes back to remote work. It always comes back to it remote seems work. that the heavy handed, ossified mindset and policies are still being thrown upon these companies. Yeah in a blanket way. Yeah. They're ensuring that their employees or contractors go back to the office. Their whole employee and contractor workforce is complaining about it and they're not listening. Yeah. And so they're joining companies like ours, they're joining other remote companies, and they're even taking pay cuts to do so because they all recognize that remote work is that much better. Or, so, or maybe it's not even a pay cut if you have a better quality of life right where you're living. That's so. right. I mean, if you can take your same position, even get a small haircut in terms of the compensation that you're receiving, but move to a place that's three times less expensive, you basically just 3x your spending power. And so you can get a home that's three, even five times as large. People are starting to recognize this. And I think those forces are going to compel the global 2000s to make a shift that's more dramatic than the heavy-handed policies that they've been bestowing upon their workforces currently. Given all of that, Tasso, how do you see the talent economy transforming over the next few years? And, and how will those changes impact co companies? I see the talent economy evolving in a way that allows for and continues the trend of giving talent the upper hand in terms of how they want to work, where they want to work. And I think that's a powerful new trend that's going to continue. It seemed like that was very obvious from 2020 to 2022. Now I think you have that trajectory, but then you have the headwinds of the global 2000s and some other companies that are pushing back on that. And that tension, to be quite frank, is very fun to watch because we're simply benefiting from it. Yeah. And all the remote companies are simply benefiting from it. And you can almost feel the real change happening in real time. It's a change that if you talk to folks here on the ground floor, they know it's happening. You can talk to new startup founders they're excited about it, we're excited about it. And then it's funny, you talk to some C-level leaders at Global 2000s, and they're almost in denial about it. And so it's, it's fascinating to have such different perspectives, but at the same time, see such an obvious outcome to this, which is that the town are really gonna win in all this. 
the trends are going to be the norm over the next decade, or at least they're going to become the norm. And that's what's going to change our society the most, if you were to ask me, of, of really anything that's going to be happening, because you're going to have happier people, folks who can travel more, and the flexibility of the workforce in general is just going to be a better place for those talent. And we're seeing that on the ground right now here at Web Summit in the Women in Tech Lounge with people coming up to us asking, how can I work for TopTile or my company wants to hire talent? So it's been incredible to see it live as we're here. And we're about to kick things off on the main stage, so I have one last question for you. Um, we have so many women that have joined us here in the Women in Tech Lounge hoping to get in the tech space. What would your advice be for anyone, male or female, that's interested in coming from another industry and joining and being part of a tech company? Join a remote tech company that has great technological and policy related infrastructure. So really technological and operational infrastructure to be able to work and thrive in a remote environment. The remote by default working scenario is not just a blanket success. You need to have great technological and great operational and great policy related infrastructure in place to be able to thrive. If you do that, you'll see what it's like to work in a world class remote work environment. And that'll really change your perspective of remote work. I have a feeling we're going to get some more applications uh, by Monday. I think so. <laughs> well, Tasso, so. thank you so much. I'd say I see you in the office on Monday, but I'll see you on Zoom. I'll see you on Zoom. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly.